Of all the games in Platinum's back catalog, there was perhaps no other title in need of a re-release more than Vanquish. This is Vanquish on PC. Even now, Shinji Mikami's take on third-person shooting stands as one of the most nuanced shooters ever made, but its roots in last-generation consoles prevented it from reaching its full potential. Now, seven years later, Vanquish is reborn on the PC, and oh what a treat it is. On its original platforms, Vanquish is an unsteady game to say the least. With the frame rate hovering below 30 frames per second during most battles, it never really manages to feel especially smooth. Beyond that, the low 1024 by 720 resolution used by the game is at odds with its detailed visuals and grand sense of scale. In many ways, its technical performance on last generation consoles feels at odds with the design of the game itself. But by releasing Vanquish on the PC, Platinum has been able to fully realize its potential at last. With the promise of uncapped frame rates and ultra high resolutions, Vanquish has finally entered its final form. So perhaps the first question here then is, how does it stack up against the original console release and what improvements have been made? Well, the comparison is more interesting than you might expect. My first thought was that Vanquish was filled with brand new textures designed for higher resolutions, but in reality, that doesn't appear to be true for the most part. The textures are often small and tiled, but surfaces are razor sharp even on PlayStation 3 here. Essentially, with the low resolution of the game combined with the low quality texture filtering, it was never fully possible to appreciate the detail already present in the game. There are cases where textures are potentially improved on PC, such as the metal grating here on the floor, but in general, most assets appear identical. So when looking at both versions then, the general sense is that the PC version basically wipes away a layer of Vaseline, revealing the inner beauty within. But that doesn't mean there aren't a few extra improvements here either. For one thing, ambient occlusion has been added, though the effect itself is rather limited. You can cycle between the four different quality settings here as well, though again, the impact is minimal. Motion Blur also uses more samples here on the PC, producing a smoother looking effect. You can even disable LODs altogether, forcing the game to show greater detail at a distance, visible in scenes such as this. Notice how the structure details sort of pop in and out of low and high detail based on proximity on PlayStation 3, while on PC it remains completely stable no matter how far you are from the structure. The most significant difference though stems from its shadows. It's possible to greatly increase shadow resolution here on the PC, though the shadows themselves are rendered somewhat differently. The console implementation is heavily filtered, which helps hide the artifacts, but on PC, shadows appear razor sharp in comparison. And of course, for those curious, here's how the various settings compare on PC. How about that low setting, huh? The rest of the options menu, though, isn't really all that interesting. You can adjust texture filtering, toggle motion blur, select from a full set of resolutions, and opt for one of several anti-aliasing choices, and really that's about it. Speaking of anti-aliasing, you basically get what is referred to as Edge AA in addition to FX AA. Not a lot of options to be sure, but this is likely due to the engine. While Vanquish is at its core based on Bayonetta's code base, the team did switch over to a deferred renderer for this title, which often presents issues when tackling anti-aliasing. Oh, and just for good measure, the game includes three presets, low, normal, and high, and this is how they stack up. We'll take a look at how these impact performance a little bit later. There are a couple of extra options available outside of the options menu that may be of interest as well. Using Steam's Set Launch Options feature, you can use a pair of unsupported command line options. 
Unlock aspect ratio allows the game to draw outside of a 16 by 9 window, which is useful for ultra wide monitors, while the FOV command allows you to adjust the FOV from 40 up to 120. Another difference between the two stems from the cutscenes. Unfortunately, Vanquish relies heavily on pre-rendered cutscenes rather than real-time sequences like Bayonetta. This means that we're looking at 30 frames per second and lower resolution sequences to tell the story. Fortunately, on PC, these assets do appear to be higher quality than what we saw on consoles. The video files are still stored using the CRI Softdeck format at resolutions higher than what was visible on consoles. This includes weird resolutions such as 1920 by 1191 The point is though, these scenes are at least sharper than what we saw on consoles, but still lower resolution than we'd like. Unfortunately, as is often an issue on the PC, video playback is not always completely smooth, so there is some extra judder here that you don't see in the console versions. Of course, these videos also reveal something about the install size. The game requires more than 18 gigabytes to install, but only 2.5 gigabytes of that is the game itself. The rest is taken up by the video clips, 16 gigabytes of full motion video sequences to be precise. Still, outside of the cutscene playback, Vanquish really shines on the PC thanks to its higher resolution. The scenes were designed to convey a sense of scale, but the low resolution of the original definitely limited its impact. The higher resolution then allows you to more easily assess the battlefield, making it easier to craft a plan of attack, and it just looks a lot better too. Alright, now that brings us to performance, and it's immediately clear that Vanquish is a more demanding game than Bayonetta. We started out with the i7-5820K paired with a 980 Ti and immediately went for native 4K resolution with all settings enabled. Performance is generally very stable on this configuration throughout normal gameplay and of course it looks razor sharp. There are occasional exceptions to this however, namely the first person walking sections which do drop frames as do some of the alpha explosions. But in general you're looking at a mostly stable level of performance here. The objective here was a smooth 60 frames per second, and the card does deliver that, which suggests that even higher end cards will have no problems at all when aiming for 4K. If you're below a 980 Ti class card, however, 4K becomes more challenging, at least at higher frame rates. Of course, this is all interesting enough, but that's not really what's most useful here. As Vanquish is an older game, it makes more sense to examine lower end PCs to see what kind of performance you can expect there. So we kicked this off with an i5-3570K paired with a GTX 970, a very mid-range configuration. For this test then, we eliminated vertical sync just to get a better idea of how each resolution stacks up. So at 1080p with all settings engaged, the 970 does a killer job of maintaining stable performance. In this test area, the frame rate remains above 90 frames per second at all times, and is often much higher. The controls are, of course, very responsive at this frame rate. Now, on a 60Hz display, that means screen tearing, but at least the potential is there for those rocking high refresh rate monitors. 1080p 60 is no problem here. Next up, we bump the resolution up to 1440p, and this time, performance stays well above 60 frames per second. This ensures that 60 frames per second is very doable throughout the game, and it feels just as responsive as you would like. We should also probably mention that CPU requirements are steeper than Bayonetta here, with the i5 seeing usage over 60% across 4 cores during normal gameplay. The 5820K though fares much better in this regard, but rest assured you're going to need more grunt than the previous Platinum release. Lastly, we ran a 4K test on the 970 and well, the results are expectedly much slower than the 980 Ti with performance well below 60 frames per second at all times. On the plus side, this means you can cap the game at 30 FPS for a stable 4K 30 experience on this class of GPU if you want. Of course, with the speed of this game, we'd rather take the resolution hit and stick with 1440p 60, but of course, the choice is yours. So, based on this then, it seems like a mid-range PC should be adequate when it comes to delivering 60 frames per second in Vanquish. At this point, I've played through the first two chapters on these two machines and performance remains consistent throughout. I only mention that because with Bayonetta, some users 
did run into problems after the prologue, where we did not. In fact, in that original video, we showed all the way up through chapter 6, and it worked great. But based on this, it's worth keeping in mind that these performance numbers here are based exclusively on our experience with the game. So be sure to watch those Steam forums when it's released. Alright, so next up we decided to go even lower by pairing a GTX 750 Ti with an i5-6500. The old 750 Ti was often used as a point of comparison with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and we were curious to see if it could pull off 1080p60 in this game. Unfortunately, as you can see, well, it really can't. This is with all of the settings at the highest value, however, and it definitely struggles to hold a smooth frame rate. But if we jump into the options menu and knock down a couple of these settings, including, most importantly, shadow quality, things start to look up, and the 750 Ti comes much closer to hitting that 60 frames per second target. Unfortunately, none of the other options really have a noticeable impact on performance, so at 1080p, this is just about the best you can expect on this budget card. Still, if you go for 1080p and cap the frame rate at 30 frames per second, you're still going to get a much better experience than what is possible on PS3 or 360. So there's always that. So how about the GTX 1050 then? This is a much faster card than the 750 Ti, but still a good deal slower than the GTX 970. The card does do a much better job here, and hands in a mostly stable 60 frames per second at 1080p with all options enabled. It's exactly what you would hope for, but not quite perfect. Using the in-game vertical sync option for instance, we seem to be getting a double buffer presentation here, which means that any hits to performance drop the frame rate to half of the refresh rate, and these spikes can feel pretty jarring. Ultimately then, based on this small cross-section of machines, it's clear that Vanquish is, of course, a much more demanding game than Bayonetta and requires a mid-range PC to deliver 60 frames per second. With a 980 Ti or 1070, you can expect a nearly perfect 60 FPS in the 4K mode with some minor dips here and there. On the flip side, the 970 can easily deliver 60 frames per second at 1440p, which is just great. The only real disappointment here comes from the fact that slower machines will struggle to hit 60 frames per second, but even a 750 Ti can deliver an experience far exceeding the PlayStation 3 or 360 originals. Which is really the key takeaway here. Based on our experience, Vanquish has been elevated to the next level. The original console versions just don't hold up well these days due to very low performance and poor image quality, but most gaming PCs should have no troubles powering through it. The game looks great, plays great, and runs well, at least based on our experience. But with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you found it useful, interesting, or both, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.